correct the board of directors for the meeting tonight at this time. And Doug McCash would like to make a statement. Good evening, everyone. Um, as you can see, these proceedings are being broadcast uh, via television and our Facebook page. Uh, the Board of Directors has, cons has not consented to any other use of their likeness or image. Therefore, uh, if you have any recordings, I ask that you turn those off at this time. Thank you. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, This is a public meeting. The first order I don't have to turn it off. Minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the August 16th, 2018 board work session meeting. It's on this. Sorry. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, just real quick. Um, we have, I just noticed that there is a, I have a copy of the 16th meeting minutes, and there's nothing here. They were correct. It was correct. And me is absent, and I'm not absent. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anything else? No. All in favor? That was unanimous. I entertain a motion to approve the August 23rd, 2018 Board of Directors regular meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? I do, so I'm on double vote. Okay. David watches proxy. David so approves. <coughs> Executive session was held on September 12th. The decision was by the board to postpone the assessment increase vote until 2019. Another executive session was held on September 20th. The decision by the board that Director Brandenburg's actions were not in violation of policy 1.10 and his apology was given by Director Brandenburg and at the uh, comments at the community meeting on September 13th. So his apology was given. My next report, Wayne. start with a different report tonight. We're going to talk about the cash reserve assessment. And we've got this with a consolidated. We've got the water. Water is right here. COA is here. And this is the consolidated. You can see where our cash and our long-term and short-term investments, mostly short-term. Water is 5,602,800,000. POA is current month at 674,700. Consolidated six million two seventy seven five. That is where our reserves are as of the end of August. That's the cash. And then here are restricted funds. We have the bond payment on the water side. We have the debt restriction fund on our uh, uh, the money going into the bond that we have to set aside. And then we also have the water meter project. Still one point five million left. But we've got a new line on here. It's called Reserve for Emergency Fund POA and Water. And what this is, this is the 1.7 million, this is the 1.2 million, that is the POAs, emergency cash, and also the 500,000. And it's all sitting under water, which leaves a balance of water at the end of the month, 1.191200, POA 435.5, and the consolidated 16267. That is all of the monies and the reserves that the POA has right now. Now we want to show cash and investments. This is from the balance sheet. This is December 31st, 2015. Water had 7,225,000 more. PLA, 1, 7,24,1. Consolidated, 18,949,5. A lot of people say about 18 million. This is where we are now. The numbers that you just saw. 56028, 6747, or 6277,5. The question begs the change. What happened to the money? We're going to show you the money spent, the board approved projects that was spent with this money. 
Major projects funded from cash reserves. This started in January the 1st, 2016. I didn't look at any numbers before that. Through August the 31st. This is the money that has gone out through the cash. Cooper Land purchase, 2.7 billion. Country Club building renovation, this building right here, adding real, adding the, the pro shop and all the, the nice things that you see in this building, 1.6 million. Lake Point Restaurant and Event Center. The old yacht club was refurbished and it has a nice restaurant and event center now, 1.4 million. Branchwood Recreation just now finished in the grand opening center just right away, 1.1 million. Branchwood Park Walking Trail, the phase one, $560,000. Scottsdale Golf Course Renovations, $425,000. Medfield Club Renovation, $390,000. Flood related expense, we have floods and we have to pay for those. We got $364,000 cash that went out just straight for expense. Scottsdale Pro Shop Renovation, $312,000. Dogwood bumper renovations, 279. These were the same one that we started with the most expensive and going down to the, the list. Highlands Golf Course renovations, 267,000. Lake uh, Avalon Beach, 230,000. Various 88 projects to be in uh, line with the current legislation on 88 projects, $200,000 across the POA. Medfield Pool Improvements, $177,000, just finished. Country Club Bumper Improvements, $145,000. Tennis Court Improvements, $143,000. Waste Material Collection Facility of Golf, this was a necessity to be in compliance with the government, $136,000. Blowing Springs, Bathrooms and Showers, of ADA Compliant, $118,000. Kingsfield Golf Course Culvert, the flood burst or culvert away and change the road structure. That's 110,000. That's not a lot of money, but that just adds to the pot. Hydrology study, 107,000. Islands cart path improvements, 105,000. Medfield cart path improvements, 102,000. Medfield Park Playground Equipment and Sale Prop Edition, $94,000. Lock on the Fishing Dock, $62,000. Marine Recovery, 16 dock spaces, $58,000. Playground Equipment at the Beach, $48,000. Highlands Pub, $47,000. For a grand total of $11,279,000. That's where the reserves were spent on proving the amenities and adding new amenities. That's the money. Also, water main replacement program here today used 2.93 of water. And I just kind of want to go through those numbers because a lot of people ask, where did the money go? Well, that's where the money went. It went to fix up this community to improve property values and to make it attractive for people to move and want to live here and be an ongoing community. This is the monthly report. This is the year to date through August on the POA starting. So we're going to start looking at the income statement. This is year to date, August 2018, and these are thousands of dollars. We're going to start with the POA. Gross profit POA is less than budget by 243000 Past due collections was a positive of 72000 Legal brought in to 94000 that, and balance came from accounting. And investments was a negative 50 <coughs> Less investments, you saw the money was going, less investments. Golf, 252 downs weather related. We've seen this trend all year. We had some early bad weather and it's driven our rounds down all year. 243,000 down because of gross profit. Looking at the gross profit compared to a year ago, food and beverage operations didn't exist much. Lake Point had just been over four months, just getting off the ground in 2017. So that's a $508,000 pickup that we didn't have. Rebates, $93,000. We get Carroll Electric Capital Credits every other year. We're going to get it in 2019 again, scheduled about February, I think. That's a $93,000 hit. Past new collections, we had a large windfall. Legal brought in a large windfall from some large property owners. $80,000 of that is legal, so that's $130,000 difference. Donations, 
We got the Walton Family Skills Park donation in 2017 for 170 thousand on the books, and a fishing dog uh, uh, at Five Tires contributed eight thousand dollars. Investments are four hundred fourteen thousand dollars less because we had a lot more investments last year than we did this year. Looking at operating expenses, the same period looking at the kids' budget, labor is two hundred sixty-eight thousand positive savings due to savings and open positions in labor. Equipment and tools are 134,000 better this year to date. Also, maintenance and repair savings year to date are 97,000. And other combined savings, small savings all across the divisions, total up 95,000. Those are the positive numbers. The negative is because we're self-insured, our health insurance was $160,000 higher than what we had budgeted for year to date through August. Looking at the same comparison but the prior year, Labor took a big hit, one million sixty-two thousand. But food and beverage added forty thousand that number. We didn't have food and beverage for comparison. And other budget changes across the division. The board changed budget, added positions. So that's where that number is coming from. Health insurance. We had low claims the first eight months of 2017. That's a three hundred and thirty-two thousand negative hit compared to this year. Insurance, one hundred four thousand credit. We had large credits in 2017. We didn't have that in 2018. Utilities, $90,000 more, 62% of that number is due to food and beverage. Looking at the EBITDA on the POA, at the end of eight months, the POA was better than budget by $277,702. Looking at the same period, eight months running on the water utility, the gross profit is better than budget by six hundred five. Growth, we've got more uses, more connections, more people moving into the village than what we need to budget for. Compared to a year ago, it's 366 pickup, growth again 517, and also their investments are down because of the water <coughs> improvement project that they're putting in for the water meters. It's down 155, less investments. Looking at the operating expenses, health insurance is also selling on the side, 35000 dollars negative. Credit card charges, more people moving in, more people getting water, and more people using their credit card. That's a twenty-six thousand dollar charge. And supplies are 19,000 more meter install materials. Looking at the comparison of a year ago, equipment and tools, a negative 147. Small equipment purchases accounts for that number. Labor is also a little higher. We had some uh, vacancies, it's 88,000 negative. Health insurance, a negative 48. And maintenance supplies, 45,000. Looking at the EBITDA on the water, at the end of eight months, the water utility is better than budget by 511. 541. That concludes my report. Any questions?
brings discredit to their uh, to their service on the board or the board as a whole. I now call that uh, David Brandenburg be removed from the board of directors for the direct violation of these bylaws for telling in, telling someone in a room specifically to members to shut up uh, at the meeting on September 13th. <coughs> Uh, this was caught on film, so there is evidence of this happening. I also call for the immediate, immediate resignation of Tom Judson for the failure to perform in a manner that is becoming of this body. He has demonstrated time and time and again that he and this board do not have the members' mind in their in their decisions. He has consistently made rash decisions that has left our coffers in disarray and depleted our reserves. He has convinced the board of ideas of grandeur without a way to pay for them, and is now had two failed planned, uh, planned futures that require assessment increases the members do not want. I'm part of a social media group that, with nearly 9,000 9, members, and we pulled those, those members for items they wanted to speak about. Those members uh, want, including the resignation, the following. The board should find a solution for amenities to either be closed to the public or charge competitive rates with them. We pay dues uh, and then and then amenity fees. They pay slightly more than we do with no assessment. The POA and Mr. Judson, uh, Judson, Judson's consideration to use POA retained lots for votes. At no time should these lots be used for any vote. Those lots are not in good standing and the membership does not want them to be used. The next item is spending should be real bad. Uh, the reserve should be built back up and the ancillary projects put on hold or slow until this is done then spending should reflect as any other business. We must operate in a manner that will make the business successful. The sale of Arco property is recommended and the possibility of closing, uh, of closing more <laughs> courses to adjust for the rounds being played. It is also recommended, recommended that we can operate with three courses and should do so. Other courses can be sold to private owners with cooperation of uh, Cooper Properties or turned back over to Cooper Properties altogether. Any of the future assessment increase, increase plans should be carefully examined and reflected uh, with the majority of the membership. Those plans should be considered to, to reflect the balance of increase between the improved and unimproved properties. Those plans should not be fundamentally changed, I'm sorry, those plans should not be to fundamentally change the community and the resort property or projects that could possibly put more financial strain on this community. Can you wrap that up quickly, please? Yep. I've, I've got two questions. I asked the board to indicate their, indicate, indicate their intentions for Mr. Brandenburg and Mr. Judson. No, no comment? I'm asking yes. the question. Yes. I'd like to comment on Mr. Brandenburg. I was at that meeting. You need yes. to use this. Well, yeah. Thank you for your um, I was at the meeting um, at Monday. Yep. The meeting was hostile from the start. The audience was definitely hostile towards Mr. Judson. They asked him questions and not gave him an opportunity to answer. Uh, there was another meeting going on in the back that I believe you were a big part of. Was Mr. Brandenburg in violation of, of no. the bylaws? He was not. No. He, by telling a member to shut up, he, he did not violate those bylaws. The board found that he was not. Okay, and the board didn't see the video that Mr. Brandenburg saying that because that clearly indicated that he broke those broke those bylaws. That's your opinion. Ours was different. It's, you're in violation of the bylaws then too. <laughs> so if you're not voting off of somebody that, that that told somebody to shut up, side point, Mr. Judson needs to resign. We as the members are calling for his resignation. He does not no longer needs to be a part of this. I'm not kidding. Thank you. He no longer needs to be a part of this community. He, is, he has no no sense of what needs to happen in this community whatsoever. When you say we the members, who are you speaking for? I'm speaking of, of we the members. The majority yes, of the members. Uh, like six hands. Six hands. There are four or five hands, my love. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. No. Okay. So no? Okay. You can shake your head off every time you want. That's fine. Okay. So 15 out of how many that are here? It's my, it's my turn, sir, in regards to uh, Mr. I, I asked a question. How many, 15 out of how many that are here? And I'm here to respond to that as a director and vice chairman. And uh, Mr. Judson's tenure has been about two and a half years. I've been on the board here two years. And a couple of our 
directors were on the board when he was uh, hired, and they interviewed uh, many, many people mm -hmm. around the country and found that he was by far and away the most capable. And from a personal standpoint, uh, probably unlike you, I've been in this business of planning communities for 50 years, and I served on the boards of directors of several similar property owners associations. One in South Carolina, one in Tennessee, one in Branson, Missouri, and now this one. And uh, I was involved in the hiring and replacing of general managers during my 40, 50 years of career in this business. And secondly, I also managed, was a general manager of property in Florida and one in Branson, Missouri. And unlike Tom Judson's abilities and credibility, I was pretty lousy at it. But he has been totally exemplary. He is, in my opinion, the uh, best general manager in my 50 years that I've ever hired, replaced, uh, dealt with, and I applaud the board of two and a half years ago for his abilities to keep the financial community in order, and secondly, to reflect the wishes of the last couple of boards of directors who authorized the expenditures of reserves because Bella Vista, in my opinion, was getting extremely old and dated and not growing and property values were stagnant. And uh, furthermore, I uh, also reflect his abilities at managing and supporting and recruiting much better management staff and personnel that we've ever had in my 44 years here regarding the customer service and the respect for property owners that I honestly, and the condition of facilities and the improvement of facilities, and I think Bella Vista is in the best shape that it's ever been personally in my 44 years here. And uh, I don't resent your comments, but I support the hiring of Tom Judson. And once again, he has been the best manager I've ever dealt with in my whole life. Who do you work for? I work for nobody. I'm retired. No, who do you work for? And I'm a board member. I work for the board. You work for the members. You don't work for the board. You work with the membership of this community. That's correct. Appreciate That's your correct. comments. That's correct. That's correct. And I'm, going to, I'm going to add to that also. Uh, when Mr. Judson was hired, he was hired to move this community forward, and he's done exactly yes, that. Sir. And everything that has been done to improve the situation has been approved by the board. He has not made any of these decisions on his own. Okay. And I will support and stand here. We have many of his management team here tonight in support of Mr. Judson, and they're very solidly behind him and saying this is for us. Another, another part of his management team that told the other members to shut up, is that who we're talking about? I don't know for sure exactly what Sean was, sir. Or right there. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> there were many people that saw it. Anyway, uh, we, let, let me ask you a quick question. Oh, just we've, we've had more than your share of time, sir. We've had several I, I people one, that would like question, to One other question. What was the reserves in May of 2016? Uh, they showed you on that. Mm -hmm. No, no. Sure Five million? Something like that? What's the reserves now? And we, we pointed out exactly what it was spent for. So, yes, next, fine, is it Could you Joy Sawyer phone? Yes. Oh, I was yeah. going to let the lady sitting next to him on the street. Oh, yeah. Did you hand the microphone? Joy Sawyer's next. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you bring it mm -hmm. I don't know, Bill and Ron. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I'm, I'm going to try to make a couple of notes here about, uh, as he's going to come, I'm going to try to just read this. <laughs> I'm fairly new to this community. I am not new to developing communities. Um, the social media outlets, I, I wouldn't even be here if it weren't for the social media, letting us know what is going on. I've never really even cared about being involved in local politics, but I'm, I'm upset about some things. 
Um, I have asked questions previous in, in writing to the board, previous to the September 13th meeting. Uh, in those cases, I was referred to the audit and financial reports. I didn't want the audit. If I could look at that, I wanted an answer from the board. And the board did not respond. The board just said, have you looked at the audit report? I have some, a few questions here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say those to the end. Uh, I don't feel this board that's elected by the property owners is acting in the favor of the overall membership. It was mentioned at the September 13th meeting that one member saw an ad in Kansas City promoting Bella Vista as a destination location. Everybody that I've talked to, and I've talked to a whole lot of people, not just on social media, since that time, doesn't want this to be a destination location. This isn't, we don't want this to be where everybody comes. People go to Bentonville and then they find out that, Bella, that the trails are here in Bella Vista and they come here and they ride. But we don't want this to be a destination. And I don't know if the board has asked anybody that. I only I have lived in this community a really long time. Have you been here your I, entire life? No, ma'am. So I, you came of late? Yes, ma'am. I have not been here a long okay. time. I'm a fairly new member. Okay. But the people that I talk to just out and about tell me they don't want this to be a destination. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, I realize that um, uh, as, as to the use of the facilities, I'm wondering why I pay dues and also fees to use the facilities that I technically own a part of um, when anyone can come and use them for a nominal fee. Uh, I put the recommendation on September 13th, and I'll say it again. Let's mm -hmm. charge the people that don't live in this city $192 a year. That's what I pay for one of my unimproved lots that I own. And then, if we still need to charge nominal fees, everybody in the membership can pay the same fee. But I'm paying, and it's my choice. I have an improved lot and two unimproved lots. That's our choice. And we don't mind to pay those dues. But I mind to pay them when somebody from Bentonville can come here and swim for three dollars for a day. As to the new facility, and, and if they're members, they also get five percent discount. You know, everywhere they go to eat or whatever. Um, the Bentonville mm -hmm. Community Center charges me twenty-four dollars a month as a Bella Vista resident to use its facilities. That includes everything. That's everything. I can go there, and that's everything. And I compared because I didn't want to have to drive there this summer. I'm a teacher, and I thought, if I can save a little money, I'll stay right here in Bella Vista. $24 a week for me to only get the services that I want to do. Where am I? It's a 10-mile drive. Where am I going to go? I'm going to go there. I'm not going to support the facilities here that I already paid for for four times the money. To me, that's just, you know, that doesn't make any sense. I am concerned about the lack of the transparency, mm -hmm. the behavior of this board member at the September 13th meeting, who obviously broke the ethics policy, just as Mr. Donnell was speaking and made a comment about the golf course, he scoffed out loud. <sighs> and I'm sitting right there. And he made that scoff, and that's disrespectful. And you're sitting here as a board. I mean, you know, at that night, we called him out. We said, if you're a board member and you're here, stand up, answer our questions. And it was he, and I get that, but none of us told him to show up. And he told, he told three people to show up. He said it three times. And, my, and I told him then, and I'll tell you, my five-year-old grandson knows better to tell people to show up. Especially little gray-haired ladies sitting in the front row. Who weren't even talking to him. She was turned around talking to somebody else, and the video shows that as well. His apology to you is all fine and good, but he didn't tell you all to shut up. He told us to shut up. He needs to apologize to us. He needs to apologize to Mr. Donnell for the scoff that he just made in public. That, that's just not okay. I feel like the appointment of the last board member in this connection with the Walton Family Foundation shows a shows a lack of transparency on the board's part and it's a breach of ethics can you wrap this up quickly please yeah 
while uh, part of me believes that we should take action to replace this entire board at this time, I feel that the re resignation of Mr. Brandenburg is a good beginning. I'd also like to ask for Mr. Judson's resignation, just based on the fact that he hasn't been honest and forthcoming, and he doesn't re represent the actions of this membership as a whole. I don't know where the money for the stump, I got the stump up, no, don't know where you're going to get that money. I can tell you that the people that were at the September 13th meeting don't want it to come out mm -hmm. of what we have left, what little we have left at the Walker Department. We don't want any money taken from that. Can you wrap this, please? Yeah, I'm just, you know. So I just wanted, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, my questions that I asked the board in an email that I did not give an answer to were, there are many of us that would like to know exactly what we're paying Mr. Judson annually. Uh, and we want that number including the salary, the benefits package, including the car that he drives, the insurance, the vacation pay, the cell phone use, all of that. We would like to have that number. Don't tell us to go to an audit report that doesn't have that number on because it's all hidden in other things. And also, I want to know how we spend the $35,000 that is uh, given to the trails for <coughs> chainsaw. For, for having guys come in clear and clear. We have let you go five minutes and okay. let's ask you kindly to wrap it up. I, 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 and, but you said that you did want to hear, and so I'm just asking, we would like to know how that money is spent, how that $35,000 is spent. So those are my, my, those are my two questions I'd like to so, How the $35,000 spent? Yeah. And Joan? Like I'd like to see that, and then I'd also like um, a response to what we are, what we're actually paying annually to Mr. Judge, because there's a lot of rumors out there about how that works. Mm. Uh, quickly about the trails, $35,000 is, a, and that's projected over the course of the year. You know, turn it on. Yeah. 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 But if we had that last year, we should know how it's been. Yeah. 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 Ye
provided that no such dedication or transfer, determination as to the purposes or as to the conditions thereof shall be effective unless such action shall be approved by a vote of 51% of the votes of each class of membership and unless notice of the proposed agreement and action thereunder is sent to every member at least 90 days in advance of any action taken. Article 10, Section 2, Purpose of Assessment. Assessments levied hereunder by the club shall be used exclusively for the purpose of promoting the recreation, health, safety, and welfare of residents in the properties, that is the POA. The only precludes in the declaration are assessments levied for maintenance of roads and streets within the properties, even though they may have been dedicated to public use. These are our declarations. How you guys can change a policy and say these don't matter anymore that anybody can come in and use our amenities by paying an extra little fee. Mr. Judson seems to be very aware of what it takes to change our declarations. There is a video on In the Know where he explains how difficult it is to make the POA go away. I would like a show of hands here. Can you all vote as a membership on this board, as members of this board, vote to have the POA go away? So that's an absolute no? No. Then how can you vote with our declaration, or how can you say, change the policy of our declarations, that they're exclusively to the use of members and residents only? That is what I'm having a problem with. Everything that has been done has been the, the trail system. People are telling us, oh, like, get over it. It's a done deal. Mayor Christie, has said there's 150 miles of trails planned over the next 15 years. The city doesn't own this property. We do. That's correct. So how can you give, how can you justify dedication by any legal word? $11 million of trails dedicated on a renewable lease. Okay. For how many years? 25 years? Let us answer that for you. Doug, do you want to take that, please? Like you said, it's dedicate or transfer. That means a change in ownership. Which no, no, it does not. Yes, dedicate or transfer no, it does not. means transfer means a change in ownership. From Would you like a legal ownership. challenge on that? Because unless you, you know, that yeah. can happen. Yeah, that's fine. Because there are people who bought their property with common property in the back to guarantee their privacy. They were told that that, that will always stay common property. It they now have um, 101,000 trail users running through their backyards. You have 11 tunnels planned for this next phase to go under our roads. Look at Sunset Drive and tell me whether that's a good idea. I mean, these are the kind of things that it doesn't make sense and that's where the disconnect is. These are our rights. These are collectively, this common property is that's, owned by us. That's an interpretation I'm gonna to have to ask. Well, then I will ask for written legal opinion about dedicating to public use our properties as opposed to what it states very clearly in our declaration. Thank you. Next up will be Wally Shelton. It's been a long time. Wally Shelton, one blade away. In the late 90s, in the early 2000s, when the board members heard that, many fell. I've been laying low for quite a while, but now I'm a little upset. First of all, there used to be an invocation rotated amongst all the ministers here in the village. When do we stop doing that? When they no longer were act or participating, they disbanded their total group and they did not choose. We've asked several cents and they did not choose to do it. Good enough. Good enough. I called Dwayne Mitchell yesterday and I said, Dwayne, I'm on the, I'm on the website <clears throat> and here it is, September 28th, and we don't have uh, 
August figures posted yet. And I checked at 6 o'clock tonight before I came over, <coughs> and there are no figures posted. I approached Mr. Judson in the hallway, or he approached me, however you want to call it, and he says, oh, we post those after the board meeting. So if there's any correction, it can be changed. So that puts you two months behind. It puts me two months behind. I wanted to know the consolidated figure for food division as of August 31st. I know what it is in July. A loss of $517,845. Now, if business is picking up the way some people feel it is, either that number will stay the same or decrease. But I'll take a shot in the dark, and I'll bet you, Ruth, five dollars that it's greater than five seventeen eight forty-five. You want to take my? I'm bet? not really a betting man, sir. Okay. Well, we did. I've lost too many times. I was sitting in the other room, and I really enjoyed the fact that the board and, and management here decided to put the screen in there so we could see what's going on. The July thirty-first. <clears throat> reserves, cash reserves for the POA, and I don't count the water department in because the water department is a separate entity. That was split out of the POA about 18 years ago. I moved here, I lived here September 10th, 21 years. The cash reserves at the end of July were $644,200 for the POA. If I read the slide right that Wayne put up, the current reserve for the POA is $433,500, showing a decrease of about 200. <clears throat> if we keep this up for the next couple months, what are you gonna do for money on November 1st? Once again, many of you board members don't know me, don't recognize me, don't know anything about me. I was part of getting the city founded. As a result of getting the city, in using old figures, 03, 04, 05, as I stated in my email, the city is saving this board $5 million a year because the city assumed the streets, the police, and the fire. Many people were looking for a decrease in their assessment once, once incorporation went through. But you know how that goes. <laughs> this POA is a lot like the city, you know, give them the money and they'll spend it. In closing, I'd like to make a point, evidently one of the directors isn't here, and I don't see his card. David Watch. You know who it is. David Watch, it's not here. Whatever. But each of you directors have a fiduciary responsibility to each member, whether it's improved or unimproved. Which means to me anyway, you're not supposed to run this POA into the ground. And at the way it's going, that's what it looks like. Now, I couldn't believe all the people were here, and I couldn't believe Mr. Lowry's uh, comment that, you know, usually there's only four or five people here. But we have to, as I pointed out in my email, get some kind of fiscal responsibility. And you're not showing fiscal responsibility. You know, whether you're going to have to cut back at the restaurants, whether you're going to have to cut back at golf, you're going to have to cut back at something because you're running out of money. Even if you dip into the million and a half that the water department has, if you can lose $200,000 a month, it doesn't take very long to run through <coughs> $2 million when you add uh, both of them together. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, is it T. Bidwell? T. T. Tia. Tia? Okay. Tia 
Bishop at well, 20 Sandbridge Drive. I am a new resident here and unique to me. Sure. Uh, Tia Bidwell, 20 Sandridge Drive. I have two topics tonight. Uh, first of all, thank you for letting me speak and listening to you tonight. Um, it's my opinion that it was unfair to not have a member vote in the addition of the new West Side Trips. I feel it was unfair to use our member common land without a member vote. I was informed from Facebook, of all places, of when this trail was announced. I found the map online and found out that it is directly behind my house, within sight of my back door. I do not have a fence. I have dogs. This, this is unfair to me, to be told from Facebook what is happening. Um, I bought my home and the lot next to it and a lot down the street for the scenic views, for the silence of my neighborhood. That is now going to be taken from me. I did hear that there have been meetings about these trails, but it was not something as a new resident that I was aware of or something that I would think I needed to be aware of. Um, and honestly, it wouldn't have mattered even if I had known that the trails were being built because the map was not released until it was already decided and no member vote was taken. I actually support the idea of trails. I do think it would help me sell my house faster, but I don't want to sell my house. I do like the trails. I just wish I had the opportunity to vote and be prepared. What this trail is doing to my family is making it where I have to now buy a $10,000 fence. Your decision affected mm -hmm. my family's finances. And all I believe it would have taken was a vote and transparency from this board that it was coming. My, and I, my question was going to be, what is the legality of that? Because like she said, I read the bylaws, and from my common sense wording of it, it says if you sell or lease the property of common land, it was a 51% number vote. You've already answered it, so thank you. So <coughs> but thank you. My second one is, you guys are asking for us to come speak. You're asking for feedback from the group. On September 13th, Mr. Judson said that he is not paying attention to social media. Our community is changing. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear from us, listen to us where we're speaking. We can't all come here all the time. We cannot fit 500 people here. So please, I just ask you to pay attention to social media. Thank you. Thank you. Tommy Frontag's next. Tommy, are you out there? Is he still out there? If not, Joseph Bolinger. Here comes Tommy. Tommy Frontag, 25 from Long Drive. I've been in here before. Didn't realize everybody's going to come to hear me talk. But I uh, understand <laughs> what people are talking about. And I have a couple of things that I'd like to bring up to the board. And I've been doing some figuring, trying to get my facts here, because I think uh, Tom said, get your facts together. And uh, I'm concerned mm -hmm. about the expense of our salaries that we have in the POA. In the, in the POA. Look back from 2016, the 2018 budget that you have proposed, and from 16 to 17, salaries rose about $966,000. And from 17 to 18 budget proposal, it's going to go up another $527,000. That's a 23% increase in salaries since 2016. And Dwayne made a comment when he was showing us the slides on the basis that food and beverage was in there. Well, I pulled food and beverage out. So food and beverage is not in those numbers. Our salaries are up a total of $1,493,000 over those two years which is a pretty good sized number. The other thing is that our overall expenses, and I pulled food and beverage out again, from 16 to your budget for 18, expenses are up $1,791,000. Now, I have voted for an assessment increase every time we had one, and I firmly believe that we need an assessment increase in order to keep everything going like it should be. 
but I think we need to get a hold of those salaries and expenses. We cannot afford to have salaries go up at that rate. Uh, I would like to see the salaries decrease if we're going to have a fee in Let's go up on fees so much, but let's have salaries go down that same amount. Then we got a double whammy on the thing. But uh, the other thing is, I don't know what the board is going to do in the future as far as an assessment increase. If that's still on the board or is that still on the table, table or is that taken off? It's taken off until next year. But it will come back, is what you're saying. We will need one. Is it going to be similar to what we're talking about? We have not talked about it at all, Tommy. Okay. I would like to do this. I mean, like, I'd like for the board to do this. If we're going to have an assessment increase, whether it be 10 and 2, I think we should put it on a ballot, yes or no, just like it should be. And the other thing that was on there that people are so upset about is the remodeling, of, or not remodeling, but the community center, that $12 or $14 million. Dollars. What would be wrong with putting that on the same ballot? Would you be in favor of building a new community center to replace the rear hall at a cost not to exceed a certain number? Now this isn't a boat, this is a boat, but it's not in, in, in stone. Also, a third question, would you be in favor of remodeling the current rear hall by no more than X number of dollars? Plus, in negotiating to get people to vote, members, why not put in there, if the proposed assessment increase above is approved, no fee increases would be implemented during the next three years. All fee structures would remain as it is through 2022. A lot of people would probably vote for it if they knew their fees weren't going to go up if they start paying an extra ten dollars a month. Also, I think we should in there put in there that the board would be required to build our reserves up to a twenty or twenty-five percent of our annual expenses as soon as possible and keep that reserve at that level in the future. I would also be in favor the board voting the lots that they own in order to reach a quorum, but vote them 50 for and 50 against. Thank you. Thank you. Joseph. Is it Bollinger? Joseph Bollinger. I think that's correct. D-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R. Is there a Joseph Bollinger out there? Okay. He's coming to All right. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to yell at you. A lot of people out there. Okay. Uh, I'm Joseph Bollinger. I live in uh, 14th and Drive. I uh, live in Elvis, the majority of my adult life, and I have two uh, homes in our wonderful city. Uh, I'm currently renting out uh, one of my homes to a tenant who would love to totally utilize our amenities, but unfortunately she cannot due to the high fees that people are considered guests are forced to, to pay, especially for voting. Uh, they try to get a vote, they have to do it by week, and it's very, very high. Uh, I understand that people who live outside the city should, should pay higher fees, and, or if they, if, they, if they have access to amenities at all, but renters who live here just like homeowners, uh, I think they should be treated the same as, as homeowners in that regard. They're, they're forced to get uh, guest passes, and they're, and they're treated like second-class citizens, and I really don't see them change that. I think, I, I think already that you know, our use fees are already overpriced as they are for compared to for starting things, for things like pools and things of that nature. And it's frankly just unsustainable for, for people to rent here to be able to use our, our amenities like they like should be able to. And I think, I think renters should have the same access that homeowners have. They pay their POA fees just like anybody else. And I really think that's important. It makes it, makes it better for me as, as, a, as a business owner with my rental to be able to, be able to advertise it. And I really like it to be able, be able, be able to utilize it fully. Uh, the second thing, and I know it's touched on this in a while, but uh, I'd like to know if there's any consideration for the, right now, if, if people do not pay their POA fees, how there's a threat of disconnecting with their water utilities. I know that was a long time ago. I, I haven't got, to, I, I got a letter like that, but I've heard about that in the past, with people getting threatened with water, water disconnects from not paying their POA, uh, their POA fees. And I was wondering if that's, 
an ethical thing to be able to do to turn off essential utilities in, or, in order to um, not pay the, the PWA fees. I think that's, I think it's very wrong to do. I don't, I don't think that PWA fees uh, should be, or threat of turning off some water should be a tool to collect PWA fees. And honestly, anything that is good, like our amenities, which are good, uh, should not, I mean, if, if anything's good, it shouldn't take force or provision to be able to use it. I mean, the money should be good and speak for themselves and not force people to be able to uh, pay the fee with the life right up the water to And uh, I already, we're, already, we're already taxed too much as a nation, we're already taxed too much locally, and be able to, uh, and the government waste our tax dollars, and I feel that our fees are already too much, and I think the POA waste our seven dollars. I'd like to see some more uh, common sense spending more about versus some fees. That's all I have. Jeremy, did you want to address that? Uh, thank you. I appreciate your comments and appreciate the comments of everyone that has come here tonight. Uh, several have talked about uh, the fees, whether or not they're going to raise, lower, whatever. Uh, at the current time, uh, we're studying the fees um, with holding back on the uh, assessment vote uh, that may affect fees for this coming year. Uh, at this point, we don't know. But there will be a public meeting November 8th at 6 o'clock in the evening at Bearden Hall where we discuss the fees. So anyone, everyone is welcome. We would appreciate comments of what you think fees should be prior to that meeting so that we can work on that. And it's what about like with the water disconnect? I, mean, I guess I, that's not something to touch on a long time. I've heard hearing stories of people with threats of water disconnect. I, I read about that being an issue. Yeah, the, the policy was implemented a, a number of years ago to allow for that. Um, the water system is a common property, and to have access to that, they have twenty-four dollars a month. Uh, they gave us, I guess you say, every because you're. They yes, they do. Yes. Yeah. So, so to be able to have access to water, they have to pay that. I mean, because that's obviously because we're, you know, we're talking about increasing fees, so I mean, that's something definitely need to consider. I mean, that's a, water is a pretty important thing. I, I know, I mean, obviously, people need to pay their fee with fees, but really, that should not be used as a tool for that. I, but I, they I, work many different ways, and in trying to help these people come into <coughs> Their water situation or before the water situation is even dealt with so it's not a automatically shut it off it's they work with them to try to get their sure. payment done but it's still an option i, mean, I, I, an option. I just don't think it's an option it should be on the table all right mm -hmm. yeah, that's a life essential thing okay. and a doa thing should be granted like i said people live here should pay it you know that exists that we signed up for that but it's a tool that should not be used no. okay. uh, and what, what about the guest passes in regarding you? your comment about renters should have the privileges the uh, back in the 60s and then the 70s and 80s when I got here, the POA uh, inferred that that was legitimate to uh, have the homeowner uh, or property owner go ahead and say to the renter, if he's an annual lessee, that if you'll pay the lessee, he can be assigned the privileges and then the member would not have the privileges on that particular house but that was declared uh, illegal and illegitimate uh, about probably 20 years ago but uh, they used to do it and it helped uh, it helped get more uh, renters here there was a court case in the early 80s that decided that yeah. so they decided back in the 80s it was not it's like, not legal it's not legal because I, I know I, like for, I think for a guess it's like 80 dollars a week have a vote, so you know, we're talking pretty substantial money if the person has a vote wants to fish in there. Our lakes are awesome. I'd love to be able to advertise to renters saying, hey, come on here and have your vote and be able to enjoy our beautiful Nova so that we can be advertising as such right now. Uh, so I'd like to see that possibly uh, reassessed in the future. Thank you. That's all. That is all I have signed up to. Um, go ahead. Thank you for your service. Appreciate it. My name is Steve McKee. Uh, we're property owners, three Tyree Place. About 